Good morning, my name's Alex and welcome to today's Bible Reflection. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 21, verses 29 to the end of the chapter. Let's open in prayer. Lord God, I pray that you will speak to us by the power of your spirit today. Set our hearts on fire with love for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I think one of the things that makes people feel most uncomfortable about religions or any anything like that is when you start hearing a prophet talking about the end times and giving set dates and set ways in which that's going to happen, explaining as if they know the set time. And then we see that time come and go. And the prophet and the followers who usually gone off to live in some closed community are all left wondering what happened until till that person says well i got the date wrong and the messiah didn't come on that day he was i read something wrong in the stars maybe or or in some ancient text which which told me otherwise i wonder how much energy has been spent throughout the last few thousand years trying to speculate about the day that jesus will return and i think that this, and this morning's reading, Jesus really answers that and tells us what we need to be doing um, as we consider his return. And really, the return of Jesus is the hope of our faith that that there will be a new creation and it will be perfect. And we will be with God and with Jesus. And I think we get we lose that hope because we fear the maybe what seems a bit crazy to us outside of that but Jesus says in verses 29 to 31 when he's talking about the parable of the fig tree and all the leaves that that the leaves will be there when we notice it so it's just going to happen and actually that makes sense when you when you look down further at the in in the verses and we see that the day will close on you suddenly like a trap for it will come on all those who live on the face of the whole earth. In verse 34, it will come suddenly like a trap. We can't know. We can't know. Except that when we see the signs, we will. And we don't. We can't speculate on that. But Jesus promises that it will be clear when it happens. So how does he tell us to prepare? And I think... The answer we can find is in verse 34. Be careful of your hearts. Be careful or your hearts will be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness and the anxieties of life. And that day will close on you suddenly like a trap. Jesus is telling us to prepare our hearts. He's saying, don't worry about what I'm going to do when I'm coming back. But make sure that you are ready for that day. Prepare your hearts. Don't be weighed down. Do you know, it's funny here that Jesus doesn't say that the opposition in the world and the suffering of the world and maybe the opposition to the church is going to be our biggest problem that gets in the way of us being prepared for his return. He talks about our hearts and how we can be weighed down by this life. And that's not saying to take this life cheaply or to not care about it, but it's about having a right perspective, a godly perspective. And so often we get immersed in the problems of now to the extent that we completely disregard our faith. We, we forget about Jesus because we're so worried about getting our kids into the right school, um, getting a new job, um, securing the perfect husband or wife. Um, living in the moment, being seen as fun with our friends, um, living, just enjoying this life because this life is there to enjoy. But we get so immersed in it that we forget that our hearts get weighed down. They get down and we forget to look up. Our hearts, aren't, our hearts start stop looking up to the Lord, to Jesus. And Jesus says, be always on the watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen. The only way to prepare our hearts is, and to keep a right balance and a right perspective 
is to keep praying and to have that relationship with God. And if we keep praying, then that is us acknowledging who God is. It's us relating to him. It's us trusting in him. Jesus says pray. And in verse 37, we read each day Jesus was teaching at the temple and he's telling people about the gospel, about that Jesus will come again and what's going to happen. But each evening he went out to spend the night on the hill called the Mount of Olives and all the people came early in the morning to hear him at the temple. He always, when he retreated to the hill, that was often a sign that he was going to pray to be with God on high ground. That's what it symbolised. So Jesus retreated to prayer because the only thing he could do to keep his perspective right was to be in relationship with God, to be communicating with God. All we need, what Jesus says, our biggest problem is, is that don't start worrying about the last day. Don't start worrying that it could be, because that will just happen. And you won't, and we won't even know until we see the signs. The signs will be there and it will be too late and it will be like a trap. But what we can know is that we, and we can enjoy this life, but to keep that balance, find space for God. How can we find space for God? How can we be like Jesus and do our work and retreat to that, to the Mount of Olives as Jesus did to spend time with the Father, to keep our hearts in the right place so that we are prepared. For heaven and earth will pass away, Jesus says, but my words will never pass away. Let's trust in the one whose word will never pass away. It's been here for 2000 years now and it's still as truthful as it ever was and it's don't spend your time in this beautiful word of God trying to find out clues for a last day but use it to draw your heart closer to Jesus use it to lead us in prayer so let's follow Jesus' example and draw close to God and and open our lives up to him in prayer Lord God, we find it so easy to have our minds set on other things, to, to not be focused on you. But Lord, help us to keep our eyes on, on our hearts and help us to keep our eyes on you and trust in the promise that you will protect our hearts. Help us to enjoy this life, the gifts of life, of people, of friends, of parties and all the good things, but help us to keep that balance. Help us to always find that space to retreat to, to be with you, so that we, so we'll, that when that trap goes, Lord, that we will be ready to meet with you and that it will be a day of joy as we are reunited with our Lord and Saviour. In your name we pray. Amen. <laughs>